Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Marvel. Get Super Serum at the Beginning. Chapter 21. Although he thought so in his heart, Dr. Banner still tried his best to resist the appearance of Hulk. You know, before the Avengers appeared, Banner was extremely resistant to the Hulk. Seeing that Banner didn't speak, the bearded man nodded and walked towards Chin Chao again. He still believed what Chin Chao said, after all, he looked thin and gentle. I was extremely scared when I was holding a gun against him. Tell me carefully how you two met, what he told you, and tell me every detail. Big Beard wanted to confirm whether Banner was the one who rescued Tony Stark after the break. Anyway, now that Tony Stark has escaped, it would be good if they could catch their people in exchange for some benefits. He has been coveting Baldhead's sophisticated weapons for a long time. With this purpose in mind, he also became softer when speaking to Chin Shao. Um, Doc can you put the gun away first? Chin Shao looked frightened and said cautiously. Of course, as long as you. The bearded man had just moved the muzzle of the gun away and was only halfway done. Chin Shao's eyes suddenly changed, and his right hand stretched out like lightning. Holding the bearded hand holding the gun, he pressed his thumb hard towards his tiger's mouth. In an instant, the bearded pistol was in his hand. He directly took the opponent's leader hostage. Get out of the way, everyone, get out of my way. Chin Shao held the bearded man hostage and constantly threatened the surrounding terrorists, forcing them to give up an open space. At least his back was safe. In fact, if you capture the thief first and capture the king from the beginning, you will be sure of facing Chin Shao. But Dr. Banner is here, and he has no chance of facing the angry Hulk in the desert. We can only use this relatively safer method. Who knew that Big Beard had just been kidnapped? The system voice in my mind sounded again. Special mission released. Obtain Hulk's trust and initially gain his friendship. After completing the mission, you will receive a copy of Hulk's Mutation Potion, Improved Version. Hulk Mutation Potion, Improved Version, obtained 30% of the Hulk's strength, defense, and self-healing ability, eliminating negative effects such as transformation and losing sanity and anger. P.S. It has 30% of Hulk's strength without many negative effects. It allows the host to build a monument and be a fool with peace of mind. You deserve it. Your uncle. The system's words made Chin Shao suddenly say a curse word in his mind, what does it mean to be a and build a memorial arch with peace of mind? You are the fool. Your whole family is a fool. First of all, I don't have an uncle, and I don't have any family. The host doesn't have to be so pointless and angry. Just say whether you want it or not. Say it loudly, do you want it? You actually let the system tease you. But, yes. Of course yes. If this is the reward, then the risk is definitely worth taking. It's simply the law of true fragrance. This special task directly caused Chin Shao to change his strategy. I originally wanted to tease Dr. Banner and escape safely. But the current approach is different. Your acting skills are good, you saved Tony Stark. Big Beard also thought Banner and Chin Shao were in the same group. But this is not the United States. You can't get out of this desert even if you hold me. We are freedom fighters and we are not afraid of death. The bearded man said bitterly. Yeah, Chin Shao smiled. Looking at Dr. Banner who had already stood up and came to his side, he said quietly. If you're not afraid of death, then are you afraid of the big green monster that can beat you into a meat pie with one punch? The big green monster. How do you know? Big Beard and Banner spoke almost at the same time. Chin Shao ignored the bearded man's words, but looked at Dr. Banner and said seriously. Doctor, I can help you get rid of the harassment of the military, but now, I need that big green guy to come out. Boom. As soon as he finished speaking, Chin Shao shot Dr. Banner directly in the chest without hesitation. You. Banner looked in disbelief. He uttered one word with difficulty, and then slowly fell backwards to the ground. What did you do? Did you kill your partner? The bearded man also said with a surprised look on his face. But Chin Shao didn't have time to explain anything to him right now. She just whispered in his ear, you said you are not afraid of death, so I wish you good luck. As soon as he finished speaking, Chin Shao pushed the bearded man towards the place where Banner fell. As soon as he turned around, he turned around and ran away. A wisp of smoke ran out for more than 10 or 20 meters, and then the terrorists around them all reacted. Two people hurriedly helped up the bearded man, 
while the others pointed their guns directly at Qin Shao in the distance. But he didn't have time to shoot. A beast-like roar sounded. Roar. The corpse on the ground turned into a huge green monster at some point. He suddenly stood up from the ground, more than two meters tall. The muscles all over his body looked harder than steel. He was still holding the bearded head in his hand. The originally tall bearded man looked as weak as a doll in his hands. With that earth-shattering roar, the green giant grabbed the beard and smashed it hard at the off-road vehicle next to him. It actually dented the entire front hood of the car. He used his flesh and blood to directly smash the front cover of the car and the engine inside into scrap metal. 70 or 80 percent of the bones in Big Beard's body were shattered. He was almost smashed into a pulp, and he was about to die. Only then did the people around him react. Subconsciously, he raised the gun in his hand and fired wildly at the monster. Da 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 da. Dozens of guns were pointed at Hulk at the same time, and bullets poured down on Hulk's body like crazy. It's a pity that even Hulk's skin can't be broken in the slightest. Bang. As soon as he came out, he was attacked wildly, and Hulk went into a state of rage. One kick directly kicked a terrorist away a hundred meters away. Then he directly picked up the broken off-road vehicle. Aim directly at the crowd and take a picture horizontally. The people haven't completely dispersed yet. At least three or four of them were photographed and turned into pulp. For a moment, it was a bloody mess with bullets flying everywhere. Those terrorists from the Ten Rings gang who claim not to be afraid of death. At this moment, they were making crazy screams and began to run away in all directions desperately. The one who was a little less courageous shouted devil directly in his mouth and collapsed on the ground. Facing the fierce Hulk, he didn't even have the strength to get up and run away. If you hadn't seen it with your own eyes, you wouldn't know how powerful the Hulk is. Even compared to the comics, the Hulk in the movie has been weakened thousands of times. But before the father level figure comes out, Hulk is basically an unsolvable existence. The violent power contained in those punches and kicks made Chin Shao, who was hiding far behind a sand dune, feel heartbroken. In front of such a violent Hulk, Chin Shao felt that as a super soldier, there was no difference between himself and the terrorists of the Ten Rings gang. If there is one, it's just the difference between one punch and two punches. System, this mission is a bit perverted. I feel like I've been hammered to death before I even spoke, okay. Seeing Hulk directly crushing a person's head into blood mist in the distance, Chin Shao swallowed hard. How can you see a rainbow without going through ups and downs? If you can't even handle this task as a host, then I'll send you back to work peacefully as a social worker to pay off your debts and live a miserable life. Your uncle, you despise me again. How come those systems that people travel through can get a hundred times rebate on every purchase, or they can automatically upgrade even when they eat or sleep? Why is it so difficult for me? Not only are the tasks given perverted, but I also personally attack myself as a host from time to time. Complaints are complaints. The task still needs to be done, and the rewards are indeed very attractive. The people from the Ten Rings gang below were killed by Hulk several times. The rest were either scared out of their wits or ran away madly. Seeing that many people were killed, most of the cars were smashed to pieces. I guess Hulk should calm down a little now. Chin Shao was cruel and stood up directly from behind the sand dune. Hulk. Chin Shao greeted Hulk enthusiastically. She smiled like a village beauty standing at the entrance of the village and seeing her lover return. Maybe the difference is that there is no floral handkerchief swaying in the wind. Roar. It's a pity that Hulk couldn't understand this kind of style, so he roared and jumped hard in front of Chin Shao from a distance. Then without saying anything, he punched Chin Shao directly. When Hulk rushed over, the pressure almost made Chin Shao subconsciously turn around and avoid it. He finally managed to stabilize his figure. Who would have thought that a fist as big as a casserole would just hit him? So irritable. Punch first and then talk. Do you think you are way? Chin Shao muttered in his heart and quickly moved to the side to avoid Hulk's fist. He quickly said loudly, Wait a minute, Hulk, I'm not with them. I don't mean any harm. I just have something to talk to you about. Hey, I know you don't really want to hurt others. You can't help but be angry to cause damage, right? I have a good idea. While dodging Hulk's fist, Chin Shao quickly said that he had heard Hulk's own complaints from the Thor 3 movie, 
hoping to impress Hulk a little. Um, it may be due to Banner's remaining impression that Hulk felt that Chin Shao was indeed different from the group of people who shot and attacked him. Or maybe Chin Shao's words played a certain role. Hulk's third fist stopped in midair. In the Incredible Hulk movie, Banner should have some memory sharing with Hulk. It may not be comprehensive, but it does exist. However, in the subsequent Avengers, the memories of Hulk and Banner seem to be different. It's become non-interference. Here, I have a very vague impression of the people and things that the other party has come into contact with. Call. Chin Shao took a long breath. I'm not your enemy, Hulk. I want to be your friend. Can we have a good chat? Chin Shao raised his heart and stretched out his hands to show that he was not hostile to Hulk. Friend. The word came out vaguely from Hulk's mouth. Then, boom. A very sudden punch hit Chin Shao directly for more than 20 meters. It just hit the ground and smashed out a piece of yellow sand. Hulk followed and jumped to Chin Shao's side. He stretched out a pair of thick arms and held Chin Shao alive in his hands. The solution is to tell Hulk, or Hulk will tear you apart. Just when Chin Shao thought he was dead, Hulk spoke to Chin Shao. There are many bad people in this world, and even some monsters that are different from ordinary people. Of course, I am not talking about you. I quite like the color of your skin. I am referring to, for example, the abomination, the one you have in New York. The ugly guy you beat, do you remember? Being able to communicate is a good start, Chin Shao said happily. Hulk remembers that he was very strong, but he was still defeated by Hulk. Roar. Hulk's behavior is one part childlike and one part beastly. Speaking of the act of defeating Monk Evil, he looked up to the sky and roared angrily, feeling like a male beast promoting his achievements. Hey, hey, big guy, you are roaring, can you put me down first? You are strangling me to death. When Hulk roared, he subconsciously used some strength with his hands, almost strangling Chin Shao to death. Hulk forgot, you are too weak, Hulk hasn't even used his strength yet. Hulk said as he released his hands holding Chin Shao. Ahem, Chin Shao coughed twice and straightened his clothes. Not everyone is as strong as you, Hulk. You should learn to control your power. Hulk is very powerful, why do you need to control it? You said there are monsters and bad guys. Where are they? Take Hulk to fight them. Hulk lowered his head and roared loudly at Chin Shao, the sound making Chin Shao's ears buzz. I have to find monsters and bad guys first, Hulk. We need some information. Bad guys will not automatically appear in front of us. Take Hulk to find him. Go now. Another roar. No, no, no. The bad guys are far away and we need to take a plane. Do you know about planes? The Hulk is too big to fly. You have to become Banner first. Airplane. Hulk muttered. I don't know if he recalled some bad memories, such as the military's attack on his helicopter. Hulk hates airplanes, and Hulk hates Banner even more. Hulk doesn't want to become Banner, no. Hulk clenched his fists again and was about to go berserk again. I know, I know, listen to me, I don't like Banner either. That guy is very arrogant when he talks. But we need Banner's help, right? Whether he's looking for bad guys or going out on a daily basis, Banner is more convenient than Hulk, right? Just like facing a naughty child who didn't know the world, Chin Shao slowly began to try to talk some truths and conditions with Hulk. Although Nick Fury always acts like only he can save the world, he also hides too many unknown secrets. But he still has a very outstanding advantage, that is, he is decisive and has the courage to take responsibility. After receiving reports from Hawkeye and Black Widow. I don't know what methods Nick Fury used, or what deal he reached. Soon, a Quinjet landed at a US military base in Afghanistan. What came with the pilot was a pass allowing entry into Pakistan. Of course, it's limited to Shields plane, and military soldiers are prohibited from entering. Of course Black Widow and Hawkeye had to follow. Originally, Rhodes was trying to stop Tony Stark, but Tony was too determined. Plus there are side shots from Black Widow and Hawkeye. In the end, there was no choice but to come along. Along the way, Hawkeye kicked the pilot straight out of the driver's seat. Forcibly driving the Quinjet into a helicopter style. It was almost a close to the ground reconnaissance along the desert. Finally, I found the traces of the bearded motorcade along the way, and followed them to the place where Chin Shao was stopped. What's going on here? 
When they got off the plane, a group of people were shocked and speechless by the scene in front of them. The traces of Hulk's battle were simply a disaster scene. Broken limbs and arms, off-road vehicles that had been dismantled into parts, and bullet casings all over the ground. It all means that some horrific battles took place in this place. Tony, your fighting teacher did this. Are you sure he needs us to rescue him? Rhodes looked at everything in front of him with shock on his face. This doesn't look like Chin Neng left it. It looks more like King Kong has come. Black Widow is also confused. Others may not know what the destructive power of a super soldier is, but S.H.I.E.L.D. knows it quite well. After the successful transformation of the U.S. team, the physical data has been retained by Peggy Carter and Howard Stark. It's still in S.H.I.E.L.D.'s secret files. Hey, I'm here. When everyone was speculating in their minds about what happened, Chin Shao didn't know when he emerged from the back of a sand dune. He waved to everyone. Seeing Chin Shao come out, several people quickly ran towards the sand dune. After finally getting up to the sand dune, I saw Chin Shao looking as if nothing had happened, and then there was a man lying on the ground on the back of the dune. A naked man, you found true love here. Tony was in a good mood when he saw that Chin Shao was fine, and teased with a smile. But when Black Widow and Hawkeye saw Bruce Banner, their expressions changed immediately. Bruce Banner. Chin, why is he here? You knocked him out. I'm not talking about him on the ground. No, I did meet him, I just made friends with him. Chin Shao smiled slightly and said to the Black Widow. Chin Shao was in a very good mood at the moment, and the mission had been successfully completed, if Black Widow and the others hadn't come over. He had already drank the bottle of glowing green serum in his pocket. God knows how much saliva he spent to get the Hulk down. Not only did he promise that he would take him to fight monsters, but he also had to promise that Dr. Banner would let him out for a walk from time to time. If Banner doesn't agree to your promise, just beat him to death and I can come out. Remember, don't lie to the Hulk. Otherwise I'll tear you apart. These were the last words Hulk, a naughty kid, said to Chin Shao. I originally came here to save Tony, but I didn't expect to end up with a banner. For a nuclear weapon level figure like Hulk, S.H.I.E.L.D. would naturally not dare to let him go back on a military plane. So Tony could only go back with Rhodes, while the rest of them directly chose to fly back to the United States in Quinjet fighters. Nick Fury is waiting to see Chin Shao in a secret base. Chin, let's talk after we get back and have a drink. Tony had a lot of questions about Chin Shao, but he also knew that this was not the place to talk. Before leaving, he told Chin Shao, Go back and have a good physical checkup. Chin Shao smiled slightly, knocked on the reactor on Tony's chest and said with a smile. New York is one of the largest cities in the world. It is also the famous city of destruction in American movies, where superheroes and villains gather. How could there be no shield branch in this city? But no one knows, except for the apparent distribution. Nick Fury also has a secret base here. This secret base, which few people within S.H.I.E.L.D. know about, is actually under the Hudson River. Following Hawkeye and Black Widow, they entered an abandoned subway pipe from the subway line. After twisting and turning for a long time, we entered an abandoned sewer pipe, and then went around several times. Only then did he enter this secret base through a secret portal. It is close to the mouth of the Hudson River. In the lobby of the base, Chin Shao even saw a huge floor-to-ceiling window, and outside was the bottom of the Hudson River. Not only could he see the river, Chin Shao could also see several freshwater fish flowing along the river. In front of the floor-to-ceiling window, standing was none other than director Lu Dan from Marvel. He was standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling window in his classic cool posture, leaving the back of his head bald. Aren't you afraid that people will discover this base? Not only did you open the window, but the underwater searchlight is still on outside. Chin Shao ignored the cool braised egg and asked, this is the floor to ceiling window. First of all, it looks like a concrete slab from the outside. You can ask your good friend Stark for technical questions. As for the lighting, there are many reasons to explain it. Nick Fury turned around slowly. One eye was fixed on Chin Shao. He reached out and picked up a stack of documents from the desk and threw it to Chin Shao and said. The most important thing is that it's us, not you. Welcome to join S.H.I.E.L.D., Super Soldier Mr. Chin. Chin Shao took the file and opened it to see that it was his own information. 
and the identity given to him by shield, agent, trainee agent. Am I reading that correctly? As far as I know, your agents range from level 1 to level 10. The director is the only level 10. I never knew there was such a thing as an internship. This is a new position created for you by Director Fury. The report shows that there is no problem with your position, but your personality is not very suitable for working in the intelligence department. We need to examine it for a period of time. Black Widow came to Chin Chow and explained. What report? Psychological Evaluation and Personality Analysis Report. In addition, this report was written by me. Black Widow smiled and took away the document in Chin Xiao's hand, and formally introduced Chin Xiao. Nick Fury, Director of the Homeland Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Agency, my boss, and of course yours from now on. Chin Xiao rolled his eyes helplessly and said lazily. Hello, Mr. Director, I want to ask you. When we came in just now, you were standing in front of the floor-to-ceiling window like this. Chin Xiao assumed the same posture as Nick Fury's back to everyone just now, with his hands behind his back. Are you standing here waiting for us in this posture, or do you have some surveillance system hidden here? You only suddenly put on this cold look when we got to the door. Nick Fury. All in all, meeting Nick Fury was overall a pleasure. Secondly, when Chin Xiao was asked to join S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury had no intention of letting him enter S.H.I.E.L.D. normally. Instead, he used a certificate to restrain Chin Xiao first, ensuring that when the Avengers' plan starts in the future, Chin Xiao will join first. As for Dr. Banner, after initial communication with Nick Fury, he used his own private resources to place him in a mountain forest in northern Canada. The place is deserted and the scenery is beautiful. Even if he transforms into Hulk, there is enough place for him to go out and run wild from time to time. Nick Fury provided a laboratory there for Dr. Banner to continue his research. A large number of S.H.I.E.L.D. personnel were also placed on the periphery to ensure that Dr. Banner would not be disturbed by others. Or maybe it's to make sure Hulk doesn't go out and disturb others. After settling the dispute with S.H.I.E.L.D., Chin Xiao did not return to Los Angeles to find Tony. Instead, I found a hotel in New York and stayed there. He was going to take the Hulk's serum first. I consulted the system before, and the process of taking the serum will only cause slight pain. But it may be that along with the transformation, the body will excrete a large amount of impurities, blood and even bone marrow. Sitting in the circular bathtub, Chin Xiao, who was clean and tidy, picked up a small bottle of fluorescent green liquid next to him. The Hulk Super Serum, the color looks like a biological weapon from the movie. Chin Xiao muttered something in his heart, opened the bottle, raised his head, and drank it all. Huh, there doesn't seem to be any reaction. Ah, ah. Before he finished speaking, Chin Xiao suddenly let out an extremely miserable scream. It felt like a C4 explosive had been detonated inside the body. It was as if the whole person had been crushed hard by a hydraulic machine, and all the muscles, bones and internal organs in the body were crushed to pieces in an instant. The moment of severe pain was beyond Chin Xiao's ability to bear. But the pain came and went away just as quickly. In just two or three seconds, all the pain in the body disappeared. Chin Xiao, who was already lying at the bottom of the bathtub, could not move. But every nerve in his body began to beat crazily. Every part of his body began to twitch constantly, looking like he was suffering from epilepsy. After the convulsions were over, my body started to itch. Chin Xiao could feel himself slowly regaining control of his body. The bone marrow, muscles, and internal organs in the body are being reorganized, arranged, and manufactured. Itching, itching caused by countless bugs crawling in your body, in your blood vessels, and in the gaps between your bones. The pain was even more unbearable than that moment ago. Ah, Chin Xiao opened his mouth and let out a cry of unknown meaning. His body twisted erratically, and his head banged crazily against the ceramic bathtub. Bang, bang, no ordinary bathtub could withstand his torture, and he dismantled the bathtub in just a few strokes. Fortunately, the hotel is high-end and the sound insulation effect is beyond imagination. Otherwise, if Chin Xiao made such a sound, someone would have called the police. The severe itching lasted for about five minutes. Chin Xiao, who looked hopeless, lay among a pile of ceramic shards and the filth flowing from his body. In the last minute or so, 
almost all the blood and bone marrow in his body were emptied. Instead, it is the bone marrow and blood recreated by the body after taking the Hulk serum. As the system said, there appears to be no change on the surface of the body. But the explosive power contained in muscles has far exceeded the scope of humans. Picking up a piece of ceramic shard lying around, Qin Shao took a breath and slashed hard at his arm. It felt like an ordinary person's perfectly rounded nails were lightly scratched. There is a very faint tingling sensation on the skin. Apart from that, not even a single white mark was left on the skin. Instead, Qin Shao used too much force and crushed the ceramic in his hand. Looks good. Qin Shao muttered something, and then yelled crazily in his mind. Come out of the system. Is this the slight pain you are talking about? For a true hardcore man, yes. The unhurried voice of the system sounded in Qin Shao's mind. I, Qin Shao almost choked to death from these words. Okay, I can't afford to offend you. I don't have the same experience as something that is not human. Complaining fiercely, looking at the mess on his body, Qin Shao reached out and gently turned on the water outlet switch, wanting to clean the dirt off his body. Although I tried to touch the switch as gently as possible. But the metal switch was still thrown away in one fell swoop. No need to be so exaggerated, right? Qin Shao smiled bitterly and stood up while holding on to the still intact surface of the bathtub. As a result, the only intact piece of ceramic was broken into pieces before any force was applied. Alas, it seems that I have to adapt carefully for a while. Now that it was like this, Qin Shao simply violently broke the water pipe at the switch. Let the two jets of hot and cold water wash towards him. But I discovered an additional benefit. It's easier to say that the Liangshui side has just entered autumn. It's just that the hot water is boiling hot water with a temperature of 100 degrees. Just like this, Qin Shao didn't feel any burn when it was sprayed on his body. Just feel a little warm. It seems that not only the defense, but also the resistance to high and low temperatures has been improved a lot. Invulnerable to weapons and bullets, invulnerable to fire and water, that's what it's like. Qin Shao happily cleaned his body. I hid in the hotel for several days. Even for meals, I had to ask the hotel staff to open the door and bring them in. There's nothing he can do, he'll break something now. Every time I finish eating, I look at the tableware that is mostly damaged and has no original shape. If Qin Shao hadn't directly asked someone to take his credit card and pay a considerable deposit. I'm afraid the hotel will kick people out directly. It took five whole days for Qin Shao to learn to control the surge of power in his body. Ignoring the looks in the hotel's eyes, I paid for my checkout and boarded a plane to Los Angeles. Obadiah is still being secretly monitored by S.H.I.E.L.D., and the whole story of this matter has not yet been discussed clearly with Tony. This is Qin Shao's task. Regarding the points, Qin Shao must come forward to solve it himself. Los Angeles, Marbury Beach. After Tony Stark returned, he only appeared in front of reporters and announced that Stark Industries would no longer manufacture weapons. He hid in the laboratory by himself, and saw no one except Pepper who came to check in every day. He hid and developed his own armor. The drawings designed in Afghanistan have been brought back and entered into the computer. At this moment, in front of Tony, there is a three-dimensional projection, which is exactly what he built in the cave using existing resources. Jarvis, remove the shell, keep the core technology unchanged, and repackage it with a newly designed shell. Yes, sir. As Jarvis's voice sounded, the three-dimensional projection in front of Tony began to rotate. The outer armor parts scattered and disappeared. Then more images of armor components appeared out of thin air. Around the arc reactor in the middle, they were installed one by one in an orderly manner. The modeling of Mark II has been initially completed. How's it going, Jarvis? Tony stretched out his hand and turned the projection, looking at it carefully from front to back and left to right. I have to say, sir, your work is ahead of its time. I'm always ahead of my time, Jarvis, help me place the order, I need them to send the first batch of materials as soon as possible. The initial appearance of the battle armor has been finalized. Tony Stark picked up another launcher on the table. In his vision, this launcher can be used as a power system and a laser cannon as a conventional weapon. It seems that I have to replace the reactor immediately. The current speed is too low and cannot keep up with the consumption of the armor. 
After lowering his head and muttering something, Tony took a brand new arc reactor on the table. Good afternoon, Mr. Chin. Mr. Stark is in the laboratory. I will inform him immediately that you are here. Tony originally gave Chin Shao permission to enter the house, but it did not include the underground laboratory. It turned out that only Pepper and Rhodes had the password and permission to enter from Jarvis. But now, there is one more. Mr. Chin, Mr. Stark wants you to go down directly. The access to the basement will be open to you later. The password for the door is 106. This password is true. I specifically watched the part where Pepper entered the basement in Iron Man 1. When Chin Shao entered the basement, he happened to see Pepper putting his hand into Tony Stark's chest. And a wet copper wire was pulled out from inside. I have to say, it still looks quite disgusting and terrifying. There is a hole in the chest, and others stick their fingers in. Oh shit, what do I see? Is this a new pose for you too? Tony, have you entered women's bodies too much before, and now it's a woman entering your body? Hey, Chin, I don't think you are that glib. Xiao Laojiao originally had a frightened look on his face when he did this, but after Chin Xiao teased him like that, he immediately recovered. That's because you don't know him well enough, Pepper. You will know in the future. Compared with him, I am as honest as a cow on your uncle's farm. Tony asked Xiao Zhao to insert the wire of the new reactor base into his chest, and then walked towards Qin Xiao. Tony, do you plan to stay like this? I mean, you don't plan to find a doctor to treat yourself thoroughly and take out the shrapnel or something. Qin Xiao pointed at Tony's chest. To be honest, the nightlight on your chest is actually pretty cool, but it's such a big thing stuffed into your body. When talking about the reactor on his chest, Tony became unusually serious. I won't take it out anymore. This thing saved me. I'm not just talking about my life. It determines what kind of person I should be in the future. I have to keep it to remind myself. Tony, what to do with this old one? Little Pepper is still Tony's personal assistant. When she saw Chin Xiao coming to see Tony, she was preparing the basement and asked Tony what to do with the old reactor. Destroy it, burn it, you know I have many characteristics, but nostalgia is definitely not included. Okay. Pepper went upstairs with the reactor. Chin Xiao knew that she would seal the old one in a transparent cover and give it to Tony as a gift. And when Obadiah snatched the reactor from Tony's chest, it was this old one that saved Tony's life at the critical moment. But now that there is another Chin Xiao in the world, this bridge should be avoided. What's more, Qin Xiao came here this time to solve this matter. Hey, Tony, don't you have anything to ask me? About Afghanistan. Seeing Xiao Zhao go upstairs, Qin Xiao opened his mouth first and said. Even if we don't consider the system and mission issues, the two parties have known each other for such a long time. From a personal perspective, the two parties have indeed become friends. Apart from the secrets of the system and time travel, Qin Xiao had no intention of hiding anything from Tony, which would create some distance between the two. A man came to see me two days ago. He comes from an intelligence department with a long and stinky name. What's his name? Anyway, he is an agent with a very impressive hairline. Tony gestured to his forehead and described the appearance of the visitor. He told me everything about you, the death of your parents, how you got your serum, how you met that agent chick, etc. You also said that you joined them to save me, but I won't thank you because you lied to me. Your energy comes from the super soldier serum, not from Chinese kung fu. Hell, I even paid you more than a month's salary. Tony took out two bottles of beer from the refrigerator and handed one to Qin Xiao. Tony Stark, don't expect to hear a thank you from him easily. But Qin Xiao knew that although he was talking about deceiving him, his eyes were full of gratitude. Otherwise, why did he even give himself the password to the basement today? Okay, actually you didn't lose. You even won millions of dollars in the casino, all because of me. Is that what the agent with the touching hairline told you? Qin Xiao said that the good old agent Coulson appeared in his mind. Um, Tony asked doubtfully as he took a sip of beer. Is there something else you are deceiving me about? That's not true. It seems that he definitely didn't tell you clearly how I found the secret cave that the US military couldn't find for more than a month. Oh, what did Tony seem to think of? He raised his head slightly to signal Chin Xiao to continue. Obadiah plays a very important role in Tony Stark's life. 
especially after his father died, not to mention helping Tony take charge of the entire company. At that time, Tony was only in his early 20s. He was extremely wealthy, had a genius head, and had a self-righteous temper. I don't know how many troubles and romantic debts I have caused outside. These are all the things Obadiah has been doing behind Tony's back, silently wiping his butt. It was not until the appearance of Pepper that she gradually left Tony's personal life. Although he did that so that Tony, the old hen, could lay golden eggs for him with peace of mind. But from Tony's point of view, he must have deep feelings for Obadiah. Partners, friends, elders, even fathers. In fact, he knew as soon as he came back that there was a problem with his route, and those terrorists had a large number of his company's weapons. Not many people do both of these things. Tony Stark is not a fool, but when it comes to the emotions between people, any genius would become half an idiot. He didn't want to think about it, and he was also a little afraid to find the answer with his own hands. Halfway through Chin Shao's words, Tony completely understood. Over the years, Stark Industries has become the world's largest arms dealer. Tony Stark's many inventions and designs have completely consolidated the arms market. In other words, Tony has paved the way for future weapons designs. Subsequent Stark Industries scientists only need to follow Tony's path. So in Obadiah's eyes, Tony Stark has gone from a hen that laid golden eggs to a stumbling block that prevents him from completely controlling Stark Industries. Naturally, Chin Shao does not need to explain these truths. As long as it is confirmed that Obadiah did it, Tony will understand it himself. Huh. After throwing down an entire bottle of beer with a tilt of his head, Tony let out a heavy breath of alcohol. So now, you are monitoring him with all your strength, right? I don't know, I'm just a temporary worker, Tony. People think I'm a super soldier, but in terms of my style of doing things, I should be. It depends on what you mean. Tony, you have seen the weapons in the hands of those people. This is what we saw. We don't know how many we didn't see. Terrorists. Drug dealers. Seeing Tony Stark hesitate, Chin Shao said next to him. I know, I know, even if I stop the production of weapons, he will still have the means and resources in the company to secretly produce and sell them. Tony frowned and rubbed his hair fiercely. Give me some time, I will let him leave the company, and I will give him a chance to enjoy his old age. Tony still couldn't bear it. Maybe this is destined, Iron Overlord is destined to be born, and the name Iron Man will be achieved. The difference is that now Chin Shao may be added. Okay. I will tell them not to act on their own. Chin Shao agreed very simply. Now he has 30% of the power of Hulk. In the Marvel movie world, he may not have enough fighting power in the later stage. But at this time, Hulk's 30% strength is simply a bug. Iron Overlord is nothing more than a thicker big paper shell, which is a little more troublesome to tear up. Tony, I can understand how you feel. It's okay. There is no one else here. If you want to cry, just cry. Come and rely on my broad shoulders to carry your weight. BB. Get out. Jarvis, contact the Los Angeles Police Department and say that a pervert broke into my house. Chin Shao didn't know what Shield's decision was regarding Obadiah. I could only call Black Widow. Do you have a problem with me? Trainee agent. This time there was no sound of gunfire around Black Widow, it was very quiet. There is something, something big, but I don't want to do it anymore. I originally thought that I would join the largest intelligence agency, become a mysterious agent, and save the world when I have nothing to do. My partners around me are all romantic beauties and so on. Who knew that I would become a trainee agent and not be allowed to save the world? The beautiful agent around me would also disappear. Alas, do you know what it feels like to miss someone every day and not be able to sleep? Chin Shao's teasing made the Black Widow burst into pleasant laughter. If you really miss me that much, then when I finish this mission, I will go to Los Angeles to see you. Normally, every day is almost full of tasks, and speaking is all business. Could it be that Chin Shao Yi didn't say a few serious words, but it brought a slightly different mood to Black Widow? What you said is a lie. It's a puppy. Chin Shao's childish words made Black Widow feel particularly sincere smiling even more happily okay it's a lie it's a puppy well i have something to tell you about obadiah chin shao repeated what tony meant 
After hearing this, Black Widow hung up the phone and asked Chen Shao. S.H.I.E.L.D. can respect Tony Stark's wishes, but S.H.I.E.L.D. people will keep tabs on him. Once it is discovered that he has some small actions in private, S.H.I.E.L.D. will take immediate action. This can be regarded as an explanation to Tony. If Obadiah seeks death on his own, there will be nothing he can do. By the way, you just said you were on a mission. What mission? Is it dangerous? Do you need my help? After finishing the business, Chin Xiao changed the topic. This is confidential. You don't have enough authority, Mr. Trainee Agent. Black Widow teased Chin Xiao Dao. After he finished speaking, he felt the sincere concern in Chin Xiao's words and added another sentence. Don't worry, this mission is safe and there is no danger. I swear, next time we meet, I'm going to smash Nick Fury's head in. Chin Xiao said fiercely that he was tired of being called trainee agent. Braised egg head, ha ha ha. Your nickname is very appropriate. Nick knows you will make him mad to death. Okay, I won't tell you anymore. I'm going to work. Just wait for me in Los Angeles. Trainee agent. Black Widow also gave Chin Xiao a rare tease. After hanging up the phone, Black Widow looked at the phone in front of her in a daze. Chin Xiao was different from the people around her. The way he spoke and his concern were just like some ordinary young people. This is exactly what Black Widow lacks and longs for, and this feeling is heartwarming. I won't really fall in love with this boy. Black Widow muttered, then immediately gave up the idea. He smiled bitterly, thinking that he probably would never have the chance to experience that kind of ordinary happiness in his life. Throwing the phone on the sofa, Chin Xiao looked at the night view outside the window. At this time, a square golden portal suddenly appeared behind Chin Xiao. A woman wearing a black combat uniform with the word TVA printed on it walked out. But just as this woman stepped into Chin Xiao's apartment, a hand suddenly appeared in the door. He immediately pulled this woman back. Immediately, the golden portal disappeared. Chin Xiao suddenly felt something and turned back suddenly. Empty. Feeling something wrong. Maybe it's because I haven't slept well these past few days. Chin Xiao scratched his head and said bitterly. The nameless place. Dot the headquarters of the Time Variation Administration. The woman who appeared strangely behind Chin Xiao just now was standing in a room similar to a trial court. In front of her, on a seat similar to the judge's seat, sat a young woman with blonde hair and a uniform. I don't understand. Why do you want to prevent me from arresting the prisoner? That person violated the sacred timeline, and he is not only a time criminal, his appearance even affects the sacred timeline itself. The woman in black accused the blonde woman sitting high in the court. C-18, I fully understand your determination to defend the sacred timeline, but the Great Time Guardian is personally paying attention to this incident. It is the Time Guardian's intention to prevent you from arresting that person. The blonde woman said calmly with an expressionless face. But he will cause riots like this, and the sacred timeline cannot be desecrated. The woman in black is still a little aggrieved. She was born to protect this, as they named it, the sacred timeline. Are you questioning the timekeeper's decision? The blonde woman's voice suddenly became louder. I cannot. When the time guardian was mentioned, the woman in black immediately restrained her anger, bowed slightly and said. Very good. The blonde woman nodded with satisfaction. The guardians of time are all-knowing and all-powerful. All I need to do is implement their ideas. You go ahead. After the woman in black left, the lights in the entire court went out. In the darkness, a sigh came. Chin Xiao was completely unaware of the actions of the Time Variation Management Bureau. After being idle for several days, he came to Tony's house again. This time, I came mainly for Jarvis. He still had 2,000 points left in the system's points mall. So far, a total of 3,000 points have been obtained, and there is still a certain distance before the opening of the second level mall. But he has nothing to exchange for it so far, the only thing left is a realistic currency exchange. But it doesn't help at all in this world, but this option allows him to no longer worry about money in the real world. But if he wants to live freely, money alone is not enough. He must create a business empire. A business empire that has mastered high-end technology. So the question is, which company has the best high-end technology? If Black Panther doesn't come out, Tony will be king. Ever since, Chin Xiao shamelessly came to Tony's laboratory. 
Bang. As soon as he stepped down from the basement, he saw Tony spinning and flying into the air. The whole person turned upside down and hit a protruding wall in midair. Then, just like a poster, the person slid down the wall above while standing upside down. Chin Xiao rushed forward and grabbed Tony's ankle to avoid the embarrassing situation of his head hitting the ground. You should find a private acrobatics teacher, Tony, I saved you again, you'd better get a small notebook and write it down. I should have started the experiment at 10% first, put me down. Two minutes later, Tony put an ice pack on his neck and said to Chin Xiao in surprise. What do you want an AI butler for? With all due respect, your apartment is not as big as my garage, and it seems to be rented. I have taken a fancy to an apartment in downtown Los Angeles and am planning to buy it and renovate it. I want to make all the electrical appliances in the house fully automatic and have the feeling of a smart home. It doesn't need to be as high-end as Jarvis, do you get me? Chin Xiao rolled his eyes and said, Tony's words were not very harmful, but extremely insulting. But you can't refute it. If you are richer than him, you will be using your entire net worth to challenge other people's pocket money. Then you go and buy the house first, and then just give me the architectural drawings. You don't need to worry about anything else. I will help you set up a private server and then install a smart program for you. I will let Pepper take the people from the company to decorate according to my drawings, but you need to buy the furniture yourself. Tony, I love you. Don't worry, I will give you the money. Chin Xiao hugged Tony's shoulders and smiled so cheaply. Tony glanced at Chin Xiao very arrogantly and waved Chin Xiao's arm away. He said with a look of disdain, Keep your poor property, you poor man. Whatever I take out of the garage is worth more than your house. Okay, I know you are rich, and you are Tony Stark. In that case, take care of the furniture for me by the way. I really wish I had one less car. I see what you have in the garage. Go away. Jarvis, cancel this guy's authority. I don't want to see him again. The two of them were joking without saying a word. A piece of news on the television that had been on caught Tony's attention. Yesterday, a small town called Comila experienced a bloodbath by terrorists. This was a group of terrorists who called themselves the Ten Rings Gang. Accompanied by the voices of reporters at the scene, the TV picture showed the ruins of the small town. There were many corpses of civilians lying on the roadside, including women and children. In some footage of terrorists, the words stark on their weapons are particularly obvious and dazzling. In particular, a bald man who looked like a leader was standing in the ruins directing the terrorists' atrocities. It's him. This guy is actually still alive. Tony and Chin Xiao said almost at the same time. The two of them saw the bald man walking to the entrance of the cave with their own eyes, and Tony even pressed the detonator with his own hands. Unexpectedly, this bald man was so lucky that he survived. Ethan. Tony suddenly stood up and screamed strangely. I just thought I heard about this town somewhere. It's Ethan's hometown. For God's sake, Jarvis, contact Rod. Tony, the intelligence department needs to come faster for this kind of thing. Chin Xiao knew what Tony wanted to do. After the last incident, Tony wanted to provide Ethan with a job in the United States. But Ethan insisted on returning to his hometown to treat people there. Tony also promised to build a large hospital for them later. Unexpectedly, terrorists came to the door. He still dialed Black Widow's number, and Ethan had contact with everyone, although he didn't get along with them day and night in the cave like Tony. But they can be considered comrades who have experienced bullets and bullets together. Therefore, Black Widow's efficiency is quite fast, and the results were found within 20 minutes after hanging up the phone. Tony. I'm sorry. Ethan is gone. Survivors in the town said they captured Ethan and burned him alive in the house. Chin Xiao hung up the phone and said sadly. Where is his family? Tony stared straight at the bald man on the TV. They're all in that house, and no one can escape. Watching TV is just a picture. Some things must be experienced in person to give you the most direct and correct feeling. For Tony, this is war, weapons, death and blood, God puts all the blood around him, when he puts it beside him. Tony Stark transformed from a playboy into Iron Man. For Chin Xiao, it may be the game mentality of traveling through the world. Or maybe he knows what will happen from God's perspective, and has no special feelings or beliefs about killing people and fighting in Afghanistan. 
But this does not affect his other senses, such as the first time he saw Tony Stark put on the iron armor. Compared with watching movies, reality has the greatest impact. Watching the auxiliary console made by Tony extend several metal arms at the same time to put on the armor for each part. Although Tony hasn't painted it yet, even though Chin Shao has seen Mark 85's heaven-defying nano armor in movies. But Chin Shao was still deeply fascinated by the armor in front of him. On the feet, hands, back, joints, there are a large number of cleverly designed parts in each place to move. The faint energy blue light inside was revealed. This is so handsome, Fark, this is every man's ultimate dream. Chin Shao shouted excitedly. That's right, this is a man's toy, and any sports car or firearm is simply weak compared to it. Don't get excited, man, the ultimate dream is yet to come, you will scream for my next operation. Jarvis, start the propulsion device, I want to fly on the ground. Sir, that will require trillions of calculations. Jarvis advised conscientiously. Jarvis, sometimes you have to learn to run before you can walk. Come on. As Tony finished speaking, the thrusters under the armor's feet spurted out red flames. The armor slowly rose from the ground, rising almost half a meter. After staying in midair for a few seconds, the armor waved its palms, and four jets sprayed out flames at the same time. Whoosh! Chin Xiao only felt a silver lightning flash directly in front of his eyes, flying directly out of the house along the garage passage. Soar! Ho! 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 Tony's excited voice echoed in the room. Chin, you definitely don't understand what this feels like, ha ha ha. Woo! Tony laughed extremely arrogantly. Tony, be careful. There is a saying in China, extreme happiness leads to sadness. Have you heard of it? Chin Xiao said sourly. Ha ha. You are jealous, you are definitely jealous, I am Tony Stark, Jarvis, what is the flight altitude record of the State Route 71 reconnaissance plane? Official record, 85,000 feet, sir. Okay, Chin, you witnessed a new flight record today. Tony cheered, and in the night sky of Los Angeles, a streak of fire flashed across the sky, then vertically upward, straight into the sky. Chin Xiao, who is familiar with the plot of the movie, certainly knows what will happen next. He directly pulled up a chair and sat in front of a blue and white antique sports car in the garage with a bottle of drink. Sure enough, less than two minutes later, a roar was heard. Tony, who was wearing armor, smashed through the two ceilings from the air, flattening the sports car in front of Chin Xiao. Well, Chin Xiao heard Tony's resentful sigh from the speakers in the room. Silly. Let's get to work. Spray him. Tony's intelligent robotic arm robot for housework slowly moved to Tony's side. He raised the modified mechanical arm and sprayed a large amount of fire extinguishing spray at the armor lying on the ground. I remember that in the original plot, Obadiah once angrily insulted a Stark Industries scientist. It is said that Tony Stark built a small arc reactor out of a pile of junk in a cave. And Obadiah's entire laboratory of scientists was facing the large prototype in Stark Industries. But I couldn't even find any direction. In fact, even if it weren't for technology crushing and genius minds. In terms of pure hands-on ability, Tony Stark's powerful hands-on ability, coupled with Jarvis and the many mechanical arms he created, can rival a large assembly line factory. After the last freeze at high altitude, it only took three days to build a brand new armor. This does not include the day it took to place the order and transport the materials. The familiar gold and red color scheme can be used as a laser cannon's propeller, and the arc reactor lights up on its chest. Chin Xiao was still in a daze for a moment. There are many superhero characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The ones with the most fans are probably Iron Man and Captain America. But when it comes to which hero is their favorite to watch, most people would say Iron Man. From the bulky Mark I in the cave, to the Mark II that now requires the assistance of a robotic arm to put it on. From the suitcase-style portable Mark V, to the tracking style of Avengers 1, and the decomposition combination of Iron Man 3. To the extremely shocking nano battle armor in the final battle. It seems that every time Iron Man appears, it can bring new visual enjoyment to people. How do I look? The armor was finally completed. Tony turned around angrily and asked Chin Xiao. Um, Chin Xiao acted like a fashion designer looking at a model. He rubbed his chin thoughtfully and nodded. 
Pretty good. Congratulations, Tony. You look almost as tall as me now. Chin Xiao stretched out his hand and gestured to both sides' heads. Tony, Van, what happened on Comila, including Ethan's death, and the large number of Stark Industries weapons still in the hands of terrorists? This made Tony furious. Before dealing with Obadiah, he must first eradicate the gang of terrorists. This matter must be done by himself, which is why the armor was built so quickly. But because of Qin Shao, Tony had to change his mind about fighting alone. Originally, Tony didn't plan to take Qin Shao with him. The first reason was that he felt that he was enough. The second is because he feels that Qin Shao is no longer his opponent. This idea came to an abrupt end after Qin Shao directly shaped his excess armor material into a ball with his bare hands. I remember super soldiers shouldn't be that powerful. Faced with Tony's question, Qin Shao turned around and put his hands behind his back in a very pretentious manner, looking up to the sky and saying like a lonely master. I don't know about others, but me. Qin, Shao, facts have proved once again that as long as you pay the price after the second year of secondary school, the so-called pretense only lasts three seconds. The two temporarily decided to go to the Middle East together to eliminate terrorists. But transportation is a big problem, and Tony has a private jet. But his plane was too high profile, so this matter had to be done quietly. Quinjet. Tony could even build one himself, but time didn't allow it. They must hurry up while the gang of terrorists are still looting the town near Comila. Therefore, Qin Xiao once again set his sights on shield. Tony now requires that his armor be kept secret, so it is naturally impossible for the two of them to go through normal channels. Ever since, two dark figures appeared at the entrance of the Los Angeles branch of S.H.I.E.L.D. late at night. This is neither a headquarters nor a secret base with important supplies. And it's still in the United States, so the guards are not very tight. Under the powerful intelligent security system, there are not even night guards. Chin Shao tiptoed and took out his ID. He whispered confirmation to Tony beside him. Are you sure you can eliminate the visitor records and monitoring here? This is my work permit. Although I'm not afraid of them causing trouble, I don't want to lose my regular salary. It wasn't until Tony made an okay gesture that Qin Xiao picked up the ID in his hand and pressed it lightly against the sensor on the door. Doo doo. Insufficient permissions. Several red lights flashed on the sensor, and an electronic sound sounded softly. How can it be? Qin Xiao did not give up and tried twice more, but it still showed insufficient permissions. Let me. Tony took Chin Xiao's ID, internship agent, okay, cute little rookie, let me try it. Doo doo. Tony sighed, handed the ID to Chin Xiao and asked. Have you ever been here? No. Chin Xiao shook his head in confusion. I found out the location here from Natasha. Congratulations, you found a good job. Tony glanced at Chin Xiao with disdain, opened the armor's arm, and Tony took out a card connected to the line and pasted it on it. Fortunately, I was prepared, Jarvis, to let this mysterious intelligence department that interns are not allowed to see how powerful we are. SHIELD's Washington headquarters may have a rudimentary intelligence slightly comparable to Jarvis, but the branch is here, haha. <laughs> In Chin Xiao's greetings to the 18th generation of Nick Fury's ancestors. In less than 10 seconds, Jarvis broke through the door. And through the network on the access control, he directly controlled this humble building located on the outskirts of Los Angeles. Each branch of S.H.I.E.L.D. is equipped with a Quinjet fighter for the rapid movement of agents during missions. Tony and Chin Xiao were lucky today, no one here used it for missions. Sneaking all the way from the fire escape to the roof. Two minutes later, a Quinjet soared into the sky and went directly to Tony's home on Marbury Beach. Putting on their battle armor, the two of them flew across the Pacific towards the Middle East. Did you know? During World War II, my father flew Captain America through enemy-occupied territory, directly to the enemy's rear, and completed a rescue operation. I didn't expect that now, I would also be flying a plane with another super soldier to fight against terrorists. But my dad is just a pilot, I'm different this time, I have this. Tony tapped his armor. Tony, actually you have many ways to fight against these terrorists. If you intended to make armors in Afghanistan to escape, then why now? Is it to eradicate the Ten Rings gang? Tony was silent for a while before slowly speaking. 
My father originally told me that if you want to achieve peace, you have to hold the strongest stick. This is my philosophy in making weapons, but since the missile with the name Stark engraved on it exploded next to me in Afghanistan. Quote. Alas. Tony sighed quietly. I thought the weapons I made brought peace to the world, but I didn't know how many people the name Stark brought despair to. Before the missile exploded, I was lying there. I could see Stark clearly. Every letter of the gram. But I can't see clearly what he means. There is only despair. I can't even imagine that if someone is in the same desperate situation as me, what will he think when he looks at the surname Stark? Tony's words made Chin Chao a little unable to accept it. Others didn't know that he knew that Tony's words were correct. Let alone others, Scarlet Witch and his twin brother Quicksilver will both be members of the Avengers in the future. I once looked at the missile with Stark written on it for 12 hours. I was just a stick maker and now I've made one of the strongest sticks in the world. Tony pointed to the armor on his body. I will hold it firmly in my own hands. This is the meaning of my future existence. I will only do this one thing in this life, fight against terrorists, eliminate war, and create peace. It has nothing to do with the country or politics. In a sense, the early Iron Man and Black Widow were actually trying to forgive their past selves. Until the later stages of the Avengers, this forgiveness will slowly turn into a sense of responsibility. Especially after the Battle of New York, the Avengers took on the responsibility for the security of this world. It began to slowly transform. Tony, do you know why Nick Fury forced me to join the Strategic Defense Offense and Logistics Agency? Curse that name. It's because he has a plan, the Avengers' plan, to form a team whose members have extraordinary abilities and stand up when the world needs it. After Chin Shao finished speaking, he looked straight at Tony. That's a good idea. I don't know Nick Fury, but I know that whether it's the CIA, the KGB or MI5, whatever their original intention was. In the end, they all become political tools, more or less. Wherever someone needs to step forward, I will appear there wearing a battle armor, but I don't want to be a sword in the hands of others. I agree with the Avengers' plan, but I don't agree with S.H.I.E.L.D. This is Iron Man's point of view. That's right, Tony. That's what I mean. We don't make the stick in other people's hands, we hold the stick ourselves. Chin Shao turned to Tony Stark and said. This time Tony lowered his head and smacked it for a long time. He suddenly raised his head and said to Chin Shao. Like today. Yes. Just like today. Outside the small town of Komila, a large new cemetery was erected densely. This is a group of mausoleums built collectively by survivors in the town for their lost relatives and friends. It was a densely packed area, with a simple hole dug and a wooden board inserted. There are not many people left in the entire town, and many young lucky people have chosen to leave this unfortunate place. Except for the elderly, the people left behind are some poor people who have lost their families and have nothing. They used to come here often, rob some things, and take away some people who had the skills they needed, but it was never like this, a massacre. They said Ethan helped you escape, which is a challenge to their majesty. The person who spoke was one of the few young people Chin Shao and Tony found in the town. Along the way, he led Chin Shao and Tony towards Ethan's grave. The words that came out of his mouth made Tony even more silent. Why don't you go? I mean if you want to get out of here, I can help. Tony asked after being silent for a long time. This is my home, sir. My parents and sister are buried here. I want to stay with them. There was a trace of sadness in the young man's eyes. This was his only home and he had nowhere to go. This is Ethan's grave. He was a good doctor and helped many of us. We set up the biggest tombstone for him. The young man took Chin Chao and Tony to a cemetery outside the town. I'm sorry, man. I should have thought of it. I should have noticed this, but I swear to you, those people will never hurt the innocent people around them again. Tony said as he took out a cheeseburger and placed it on the cemetery next to Ethan, which was his child. Before Ethan came back, he went back to Los Angeles with Tony. The first thing Tony did when he returned to the United States was to eat cheeseburgers. Ethan said while eating the burger that his children also liked it very much, but unfortunately there was no chance to eat it often in Comila. Chin Chao was a little moved by this scene. Tony Stark looks foul-mouthed and arrogant. But he always silently kept everyone's needs in his heart. Happy's favorite TV show, 
After Rhodes was injured, he put a parachute on Spider-Man's armor, etc. Even when Qin Shao went to him recently, he noticed that for the decoration of Qin Shao's new home, he was despising Qin Shao on the surface, but secretly he was secretly changing the code of an intelligent program. A large number of Chinese characters have also been thoughtfully added to make Qin Shao more comfortable and convenient to use. Ukoda is a small town almost 50 kilometers away from Komila. This place has recently become another place for plunder by the Ten Rings gang terrorists led by Baldhead. Of course, this is what the young man who led the way told Qin Shao and Tony. Sir, can I come with you? Give me a weapon, I want to avenge my family and friends. The young man said to Qin Shao and Tony before sending them off to the plane. Stay here, take care of the elderly, and change your hometown back to what it was before. Qin Shao patted the young man on the shoulder, and left Ethan's hometown with Tony. In previous news footage, reporters described the path to Komila as the road to hell. Now, this title has obviously been given to Ukeda. The roads outside the town were littered with the bodies of locals. Most of them were shot in the back, presumably as targets for the terrorists to kill from behind while escaping. There are not only young people and women here, but also many children in their teens. The worst one was a little girl who looked about five or six years old. The powerful force of the rifle tore her thighs apart. She fell to the ground and looked into the distance, her eyes full of horror. The bloody wound on his thigh has begun to turn white. Behind him is a long, irregular streak of blood. Qin Shao could even picture it in her mind. Maybe her parents had been shot dead in the town. Before she died, she told her to run quickly, but the terrorist shot her in the back and broke her thigh. So the little girl dragged a stump of her limb and crawled on the ground for a long time before she bled to death. I don't know what your beliefs are. But I think heaven is universal, where you will meet your parents and never have these misfortunes again. Qin Shao knelt down, reached out and gently closed the little girl's eyes. The little girl closed her eyes forever, but this picture has always been engraved in Qin Shao's mind. Lingering. In the small town, sparse gunshots were heard along with calls for help. Qin Shao and Tony looked at each other. Tony's armor mask closed, and Qin Shao kicked hard on the ground. Up and down, the two figures rushed towards the town like lightning. On the path leading out of the town, a child of 13 or 14 was stumbling away towards the outside of the town. His father, a man who had been shot in the thigh, was dragging one leg and running hard behind the boy. And he kept shouting loudly for the boy to run faster and faster. More than 10 meters behind them, a terrorist was holding a rifle. He was setting up a standard aiming position, with his aim facing his father's other thigh in front of him. Break this leg, and then shoot the little boy in front to death, letting the man die in despair in both mental and physical pain. This is the fun he has just found recently. The massacre in Komila completely unleashed the demons in the hearts of these terrorists. The methods used in recent days have become increasingly bloody and cruel. Locking on the father's thigh, a smile appeared on the corner of his mouth. My finger was about to pull the trigger. Whoosh. Single quote. A mini missile shot from the air, directly blowing the terrorist's body into pieces. In the sky, a golden red figure flashed past. At this moment, another terrorist heard the explosion in the house next to him. She also held some earrings, bracelets and other female accessories in her hands. He glanced at the explosion scene on the ground in confusion before he could figure out what happened. On the path made of Lois, I saw a figure wrapped in dust all over the sky, rushing in from the outside like a giant dragon. The terrorist couldn't even raise his gun in time. Qin Shao punched him directly in the face with all his strength. A full punch. The whole head exploded like a watermelon hit by a sledgehammer. Blood from his brain sprayed all over Qin Shao's face. Anyone who knows Marvel movies knows that Hulk's setting has been weakened countless times compared to the comics. But the fact that the angrier you are, the stronger you are, is a hidden setting in the movie. It's just that the difference between the maximum and minimum values is not that huge. As for the Hulk's improved serum given by the system, 30% is the maximum intercepted value. This is a pretty scary number. So Qin Shao took action with all his strength and punched a terrorist's head into an exploding watermelon. Blood mixed with brain paste covered Qin Shao's face. In response, Qin Shao just reached out and wiped his face casually, as if wiping sweat. 
Then he revealed a smile that was uglier than an evil spirit, revealing some big white teeth. Prepare to go to hell from now on, you scum. This sentence sounded the prelude to the killing. In the middle of the town, most of the terrorists and townspeople gathered here. And Tony's armor had the advantage in the air, and he had already seen a large group of people in the middle. It flew directly towards the middle. Chin Xiao, on the other hand, started to clean up the scattered terrorists along the streets and alleys. An off-road vehicle parked in front of the town's only bar. Three terrorists were moving boxes of all kinds of alcohol from the bar. The owner of the bar, a bearded middle-aged man, was lying on the floor of the bar with a bullet hole in his forehead. His wife was holding the thigh of one of the terrorists tightly, screaming angrily. The terrorist was somewhat humane and did not attack the woman immediately. He shook his thigh a few times but didn't shake the woman away. Then he raised the butt of the gun and hit the woman on the head hard. Bang. One time. Bang. Two times. There was a trace of blood on the corner of the woman's mouth, but her hands seemed to be knotted, holding his thigh motionlessly and not letting go. The terrorist finally got a little impatient and turned his gun around, hoping to kill the woman with one shot. I'll fool you, uncle. A roar, a typical Chinese curse. It doesn't matter whether the terrorists understand it or not. Accompanying this angry curse was the sudden appearance of a fist on the terrorist's chest. The angry Chin Xiao didn't even take out the Tang Dao. His punch not only shattered his spine, but also broke his chest and hit him directly. Snapped. Two other terrorists were carrying a wine barrel, and a piece of internal organs with a strong smell of blood was slapped on one of them's face. Crash. The wine barrel fell to the ground and the wine spilled all over the floor. The two terrorists had not yet reacted. Chin Xiao had already ducked in front of the two of them, looking at the two of them who were still carrying things while facing each other. Both hands came out, one person grabbed the back of the other person's head, and grabbed the hair and scarf together. At the same time, he pushed hard towards the middle. The faces of the two terrorists were quickly collided with each other with astonishing force. Bones shattered, flesh and blood squeezed and fused together. The two heads were collided into one by Chin Shao. Countless pieces of broken bones and flesh were smashed into the opponent's brain, making him look like he was no longer alive. In the end, the two formed an inverted V-shape and fell to the ground like a Siamese man. Such a bloody and violent scene, the middle-aged woman lying on the ground and being hit by a gun butt, with blood on the corner of her mouth. There was no trace of panic. Instead, he picked up the rifle on the ground and pointed it at the terrorist who was punched through the chest by Chin Xiao. Pull the trigger. Da da da. The bullets filled with anger and hatred were vented to their heart's content, although most of them were driven to unknown places by the recoil. But there were still several bullets that accurately hit the man's head. His head was beaten to a bloody pulp. After venting her anger, the woman sat down on the ground and stared blankly at her husband's body. Chin Xiao sighed, without saying any words of comfort, and rolled up an earth dragon on the street again. Speeding towards somewhere else. If you look down from the sky, Chin Xiao looks like a greedy snake in the entire town of Ukeda. He ran quickly through the streets, and whenever he met a terrorist, he would always use the most direct physical collision, and the person he killed would be a bloody mess. The town is not big, and Chin Xiao is so efficient. 10 or 20 minutes was enough for him to plow the entire town. At this time, in the center of the town, Tony had just killed all the terrorists. I was about to say a few words to comfort those who were frightened. At this time, Chin Xiao walked out slowly at the corner of the street. The clothes on his body were transformed into combat uniforms produced by the system, and not a trace of blood was stained on them. But the part of Chin Xiao that is exposed outside. On the face, head, neck and even hands. The blood stains were mixed with dust and pieces of flesh, as if coated with a thick layer of dark red mud. Especially the hair was dripping with sticky blood. There was also a piece of broken bone hanging from an unknown part of some unlucky man's body. He looked like a devil crawling out of hell. Some timid children and women couldn't help but scream when they saw Chin Xiao's appearance. Chin Xiao stopped in embarrassment and grinned a smile uglier than a ghost. Showing his big white teeth, he said to Tony. I've got it done. There should be their base nearby. Let's go there again. Tony could see that Chin Xiao was even more out of control than himself. But this was not a good time for psychological counseling. 
He nodded slightly, turned around and took the lead to fly out of the town. It just flew a few hundred meters away. Boom. A shelling. The remaining terrorists drove a tank from nowhere. He directly knocked Tony out of the air. The shelling of ordinary tanks cannot damage Iron Man's armor at all. Tony sat up and shook his head, preparing to fly into the air and fire an armor-piercing round at the tank. As a result, Chin Xiao jumped hundreds of meters directly onto the tank. He bent down and inserted his hands directly into the connection between the turret and the tank body. Ah! With a roar, Chin Xiao actually lifted the entire fort away from the tank alive. Not to mention the terrorists in the tank, even Tony was stunned in midair. He kept staring at the armor of the tank, estimating how many times the thickness and defense of his armor could withstand Chin Xiao. Chin Xiao opened the turret and threw it casually, and the barrel happened to be placed across the tank. He hugged the barrel of the gun with both hands again, and then jumped directly from the tank. Then he swung the barrel towards the tank. The barrel with the turret is like a big hammer with a weird shape. Aimed at the body of the tank. Bang. 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 Tony watched helplessly as the tank was violently smashed into thin metal by Chin Xiao. As for what the people inside looked like, Tony had no interest in taking a look. It's just Chin Xiao's performance today. Chin, do your clothes have an automatic dry cleaning function? Oh, for God's sake, you should go clean yourself on the plane first. You look like you just got thrown into King Kong's anus. Tony didn't ask directly, but joked indirectly. There is always something mysterious in the mysterious East. Chin Xiao might plan to hide the clothes matter, after all, he couldn't hide it after a long time. He turned his jeans and t-shirt into a slim casual suit right in front of Tony. Besides, Chin Xiao pointed at himself. This is a man's fight. It's better than hiding in a metal condom. Chin Xiao playfully patted Tony's shoulder and said. That dress of yours is like a changing condom. Tony was relieved that Chin Xiao could still joke, and he lowered his head and muttered. Then he jumped up as if he was on fire. Oh, why are you patting me on the shoulder? Who knows what you have on your hands? Jarvis, go back and remind me to disinfect the armor in all directions. Okay, sir. The bald head of the Ten Rings gang was once again swept away by Tony Stark and Chin Xiao at the nearby base. All ordnance personnel were again destroyed. The bald man in a camp far away in the desert was almost pissed to death by the news. It's all Obadiah's fault. God knows how much trouble this Tony Stark has brought to him. Although Tony was wearing a battle armor, he still recognized the arc reactor on his chest from the video sent by his subordinates. The bald head slammed the table in front of him. It was only when he communicated with Obadiah afterwards that he learned the value of the arc reactor. Guarding the gold mine but letting others develop some missiles all the time, this is a typical loss of being uneducated. After angrily smashing several things on the table to vent his emotions, the bald head pointed at a thick breastplate piled in the corner of the room and said to his subordinates, Take a photo of the pile of things created by Tony Stark and send it to Obadiah along with this video. He knows the value of this thing and asked him to send us some more arms. This time the loss it must be counted on him. The breastplate in the corner is the Mark I that Tony had not finished building yet. Chin Xiao only had time to bring out the blueprints when he came to rescue him. A small part of the first generation armor has been built but has not had time to take it out. Anyway, Tony felt that these terrorists might not be able to see any clues, and they were not complete products and had no blueprints. But he never expected that this thing would fall into Obadiah's hands. The various forces in the Middle East are complex, and even S.H.I.E.L.D.'s intelligence capabilities here will be greatly reduced. Under normal circumstances, what Tony and Chin Xiao did here would be discovered by Nick Fury sooner or later. But you must know that S.H.I.E.L.D. now has personnel to conduct comprehensive surveillance on Obadiah. So, when Obadiah received the video sent from the Ten Rings gang, Nick Fury also saw this video. This is... He could recognize Chin Xiao, but was the other one, a robot. Nick Fury was shocked by Tony's armor and Chin Xiao's fighting prowess. But he soon reacted. The reactor on the chest is so iconic. This is Tony Stark. Should I say he is truly a genius in developing weapons? This allows the small arc reactor to exert its greatest war value. What a genius idea. 
Nick Fury subconsciously wanted to call Coulson and ask him to contact Tony Stark. But after thinking about it, he immediately called Chin Shao. Oh, my dear director, my boss, you finally remembered that I am a trainee agent. Chin Shao is still on the plane back with Tony at this moment. Nick Fury directly ignored Chin Shao's specially aggravated internship. He said even more sinisterly. I almost forgot. I should give you a spot as an 8th level agent. After all, you can directly face terrorists in the Middle East. Oh, you seem to have blown up a tank. You are such an outstanding guy. I you should be allowed to join the action team. Now do you want to come back and report to your boss about the Middle East and the ironclad man next to you? I guess he is your good friend Tony Stark, right? This last sentence is the key point. Chin Shao chuckled. Boss, are you dreaming? Something about the Middle East, something about Tin Man, a new movie. Chin Shao still said in an unserious manner. Stop pretending to me. You are my agent. The considerable amount of US dollars added to your bank card every month is because of my signature. Do you understand? Nick Fury crushed the pen in his hand angrily. Of course I know that I am your agent, a trainee agent, and my work permit can't even enter the branch entrance. Chin Shao rolled his eyes and ignored Nick Fury's anger. Wow. As soon as Chin Shao finished speaking, Tony flicked his finger on his forehead. What are you doing? Chin Shao made a silent mouth gesture. Tony looked at Chin Shao like he was an idiot, and made a gesture to open the door by swiping his work card with his card. Then he pointed at the aircraft's instruments. Chin Shao instantly understood what he meant. We couldn't talk about that. The plane was still stolen. What are you doing? Hearing Chin Shao's unexpected cry, Nick Fury asked. I am going to sea with Tony. You know, there are many young and cute girls on the boat. Just now, a hot blonde girl suddenly kissed me. Is it my fault that I am handsome? My dear boss, this in this situation, does it count as self-defense if I shoot directly? Chin. Tony heard Nick Fury's angry cry clearly from the side. Stop making up stories for me, I want you to come to Washington right away to find me, and the work permit you just mentioned, I know why a plane was stolen for no reason, a Quinjet, in the Middle East, I knew it, come to Washington to see me right away, right away. Facing Nick Fury's roar, Chin Shao put his phone on speakerphone, looked at his left hand, and found a finger with longer nails. Aiming at the position of the phone's microphone, he began to scratch lightly. What? What did you say? Oh, this signal, for God's sake, I'm taking a call from my boss. Hello, hello. Chin Shao said and hung up the phone directly. Boom. Nick Fury smashed his phone on the table. There are not many people who can block shields tracking, but Tony Stark is definitely one of them. Especially if the plane is stolen. The two sneaked back to Tony's mansion. Chin Shao just experienced a smart luxury bathtub at Tony's house. Coulson stood at the door of Tony's house with his impressive hairline and honest face. Sir, that stinky intelligence agency agent with a long name is here. Jarvis imitated Tony's tone of humor. Coulson didn't see any sign of anger. He greeted the two of them with a smile, then directly opened a video on his mobile phone and placed it in front of them. It was a video clip of the two men showing off their prowess in the Middle East. Is there anything you want to say? Coulson looked at the two of them seriously. You should go to the cinema to watch movies. The picture quality of the pirated version is so disgusting. You can try my private viewing room. You will fall in love with that place. By the way, what is the name of this movie? Tony's answer was more serious. Coulson sighed helplessly, don't you think the thing on the tin man's chest is very similar to what's on your chest? Are you kidding me? This is the arc reactor, and it obviously has an LED light on its chest. Tony's reaction made Coulson have no choice but to turn his head and aim at Chin Shao. He pointed at Chin Shao who was waving the barrel of the tank and smashing the car body in the picture. Chin, what do you want to say? This guy is really ugly. Is he your friend? He is really disgusting. Is that shit on his face? As soon as Chin Shao spoke, Coulson was almost so angry that he reached out and pulled his hair out. It was obvious that Chin Shao's shamelessness was definitely beyond Coulson's imagination. Even Tony next to him almost couldn't hold back his laughter. Well, Coulson sighed deeply again. He finally knew why Nick Fury even smashed his cell phone. I took several deep breaths to calm down my mood. 
Colson said with a serious face. This video was sent to Obadiah from the Middle East. We intercepted this video. I am here to tell Stark that I will give you a week to deal with your company's affairs. After one week, my people will take action. Seeing Tony finally nodding seriously, Colson stood up and turned around to leave. If he stayed any longer, he was afraid that not a single hair on his head would be left. Correct. Colson came back suddenly when he reached the door. Our branch here lost a Quinjet. Chin, you are our agent. Do you have any news? Chin Xiao smiled mysteriously. I'm just a trainee agent, but do you want to find something? I want you to experience one of China's greatest metaphysics, fortune telling. You can understand it as divination. Qin Xiao stretched out his right hand and tapped his thumb quickly with four fingers. He even muttered words, child, rat, ugly, ox, tiger, mao, rabbit, chenlong. Little sloppy, really sloppy. F.A. Hi. You don't understand love. Supreme Lord, you are as urgent as a law. Ah. A smile appeared on Qin Xiao's face. Even though Colson and Tony both knew that this guy was talking nonsense. Still impressed by this amazing performance. Tony was extremely cooperative and asked with an expectant look on his face. How is it? Did the divination succeed? Where is the plane? It's not that easy. Qin Xiao rolled his eyes. There's still one last step left. Chenkin Kandwili shakes Zungan. Bagua is spread in all directions, looking for directions with broken shoes. Let's go. Qin Xiao shouted loudly, reached out and took off his shoes and threw them into the air. All right, send someone to follow the direction of the shoes, they should be near the beach not far away. Colson stretched out his hand to hold his forehead, with a look of despair on his face. Thank you so much, Agent Qin Xiao, for finding the plane. I will report this incident to remember your contribution. It doesn't matter. Qin Xiao waved his hand nonchalantly. Just give me a little bonus next month. It doesn't need to be too much. Just give me 5% of the price of the plane. Colson coughed and felt blood rising in his chest. He turned around and left without saying a word. Don't leave, we can discuss it. 3% is fine, if it doesn't work, 1% is fine, as long as you mean it, hey. Colson in the distance heard Qin Xiao's words behind him, stumbled, and almost fell to the ground. How stingy. Qin Xiao was still muttering behind. Qin Xiao reached a certain consensus with Tony on the plane. Establish a separate organization outside of all official background departments. But this matter needs to be done slowly. It's just two people now, so there's no need. Secondly, for Tony now, the biggest thing should be Obadiah's matter. Early the next morning, Tony went directly to the company in a rare move. He didn't see anyone, but went directly to his office, poured two glasses of wine and waited quietly. He knew that whenever he came to the company, Obadiah would definitely appear. Sure enough, before even ten minutes had passed, Obadiah had already appeared at the door of the office. Oh, look who is this. Our Tony Stark finally remembered that he still has a company. What have you been busy with recently? My chairman. Obadiah came straight to Tony and sat down. He was slightly startled when he saw the two glasses of wine that Tony had already poured. Then he smiled and said, You always have good wine here, don't you? After picking up the cup and taking a sip, Obadiah tapped the table lightly and said, Tony, the outside world sees us as a joke now. The largest weapons company no longer manufactures weapons. The shareholders are already very dissatisfied with you. You need to do something to restore the confidence of the shareholders. Didn't you say you want to do renewable energy? I'll help you convince shareholders, but you need to come up with something, such as a micro-reactor on your chest. Unlike in the movie, Tony's escape this time was purely because of Qin Xiao's rescue. Instead of relying on the original suit of Mark I. No one thought about this. After all, Tony had not released the data of the chest reactor. Even Obadiah never thought about it until he saw the video sent by the Ten Rings gang yesterday. Obadiah summoned his scientists overnight. The manufacturing of war armor is very simple, it is nothing more than materials and weapons. The most troublesome thing is the power source. The arc reactor on Tony's chest looks simple. But dozens of experts under Obadiah held a meeting all night, and there was not even a research direction. I saw the video they sent you, where I was tied to a chair, and I think we should have a nice chat, dear Uncle Obadiah. 
Tony looked up and spoke slowly. As Tony spoke, he turned on his mobile phone and played the video directly. Seeing that Tony Stark already knew everything he had done, Obadiah's eyes instantly became sharp, no longer the warm eyes that contained appreciation and doting for the younger generation. Now that you know everything, what do you want to do here? Humiliate me, take away everything I have, or find someone to arrest me. Call. Tony stared at Obadiah's unfamiliar eyes without blinking. He exhaled heavily. The whole world says I am a genius, but it took me decades to really see you clearly today. How come you have been facing me with that loving mask on for decades? I deserve this, Tony Stark. I turned the company into one of the largest companies in the world. I'm running the company day in and day out, and you're just hiding in your ridiculous lab making just a few missiles. The most ridiculous thing is that you, a weapons businessman, actually announced that you will no longer manufacture weapons. I've had enough of your willfulness and nonsense. You are childish like a baby in an ivory tower. The rules of this world don't work that way. Yes, Tony, this company should be in my hands. Obadiah slapped the table and roared, while he kept talking but secretly put his hand into the pocket of his pants. In that pocket, there is a small ultrasonic transmitter. It can quickly paralyze people. Correspondingly, there is a pair of headphones in the pocket that can resist ultrasonic waves. That's it, Obadiah. Hand over your position on the board of directors and your management rights in the company. I will purchase your shares at a price that is 50% higher than the market price. Find a place to spend your remaining years in peace, Obadiah, otherwise the next time the person comes to see you will be armed with a pistol and handcuffs. You have five days, this is my last respect for you, Uncle Obadiah. Facing Obadiah who was a little hysterical, Tony no longer wanted to say anything more. He said coldly and turned around to leave. But Tony's last words made Obadiah slowly loosen his hand in his trouser pocket. Five days was enough for him to complete a set of armor. As for energy, doesn't Tony Stark have one in his chest? Obadiah seemed to have aged ten years overnight. But they were extremely cooperative with the people Tony sent out. Each business of the company, stacks of information and documents. They all explained the specific content and details carefully and in great detail. It felt like I was leaving the child I had raised in the hands of someone else. He took the trouble to tell the child what his taboos were, what he liked, etc. This is a normal expression of emotion for Obadiah, who has worked in this company for half his life. This performance even made Tony Stark lower his guard. Face reports from your own team. Tony just said lightly. It's up to him, just take it slow, and make sure he signs everything after five days. In this way, Obadiah pretended to cooperate with the handover of management rights in the company every day, and talked about the history of the company and the purpose of each project, etc. Tony's people pressed firmly on the documents in the office. Privately, control over factories and laboratories has not been relaxed at all. In the area he named Area 16, a steel behemoth is gradually taking shape. In Marbury's mansion, Tony sat on the sofa and dialed Pepper's phone. All the documents have been prepared. As long as Obadiah formally resigns from his position at tomorrow's board meeting and signs the equity transfer letter, it will be fine. Okay, help me attend tomorrow's board meeting. I'll ask Happy to pick you up tomorrow morning. Tony didn't want to go to the company to face Obadiah's departure. Okay, but there's no need to pick me up. I'm staying at the company today. You don't know that I've been so busy lately that I don't even have time to sleep. It's time for you to give me a raise, boss. Pepper understood Tony's thoughts very well, agreed to his request, and even made a joke with Tony. After hanging up the phone, Tony looked a little disappointed. Sir, Mr. Obadiah Stain is at the door. He wants to see you. Under Chin Shao's strong suggestion and the impact of the scenes of massacres by terrorists in the Middle East, Tony closed Obadiah's permission to enter his home. So Obadiah, who had always been able to enter Tony's mansion directly, was standing at the gate and began to pass messages to Jarvis. Tony picked up one of the remotes on the table and pressed a button. An image of Obadiah standing in the doorway came through. Tony, open the door. I'm leaving tomorrow. I bought an island in the Indian Ocean. Didn't you even give me a chance to say goodbye? Obadiah was no longer as high-spirited as before, and his usually burly figure now even looked a little bleak. 
His eyes were full of sincerity when he spoke. Call. Tony rubbed his face hesitantly. Jarvis, let him in. In the end, Tony couldn't bear to refuse Obadiah who was standing at the door. Tony, I'm sorry. I mean I've thought about it carefully these days. I came here today just to say sorry and say goodbye to you. Obadiah walked slowly towards the inside. What's the scenery like on that island? Tony didn't get up, still sitting on the sofa and said slowly. It's heaven there. To be honest, I should have done this a long time ago. There are some things that you won't feel relaxed until you put them down, and you won't know what you need most in life. Sunshine, wine, cigars, fishing, and the essential girls, right? Obadiah looked like he had seen through everything and finally let go. Congratulations, Obadiah. Tony was really happy for him from the bottom of his heart. He raised his head and said sincerely. But just by looking up, he discovered that something was wrong with Obadiah. He had an earphone plugged into each ear. Oops. The idea just popped into Tony's head. A harsh sound came from Obadiah. Almost instantly, the veins on Tony's body were exposed, and his whole body fell into a state of paralysis. Unable to move, the ultrasonic transmitter, which can instantly put people into a state of paralysis, was his own invention. The project was later terminated by the government. Unexpectedly, Obadiah actually kept one in his hand. You do need to congratulate me because I'm about to become one of the most powerful people in the world. Obadiah changed his previous decadence and showed his fierce look. I have to thank those greedy terrorists. They didn't listen to me and killed you directly. I thought your chicken that could only lay golden eggs was worthless. I didn't expect you to give me a surprise, Tony. You laid the biggest golden egg in your life. As Obadiah spoke, he took out a magnetic absorbent from his arms that was as big as the reactor on Tony's chest. You are indeed a genius, Tony, this thing will change the whole world. Obadiah pressed the button fiercely, and the arc reactor was slowly pulled up. It's so beautiful. This is simply a work of art, a perfect work of art. Do you know? For this work of art, I specially built a battle armor that is more powerful than your new toy. Obadiah admired the reactor in his hand. Gave Tony a look of contempt. You haven't grown at all since you were 21 years old. You actually believe that I will hand over the company to you. Obadiah waved and gave Tony a slap. You want to buy my shares at 50% higher than the market price. Drive me out of my kingdom. Enjoy the last few minutes of your life, Tony. You won't feel lonely. Pepper will come down to accompany you soon. She is such a good woman, isn't she? Obadiah laughed and left. Tony collapsed on the sofa, stiffening his neck and trying to move, but he couldn't even speak. The clock on the wall ticked 193 times, and Tony breathed a sigh of relief. Jarvis, call Chin and ask him to rush to Stark Industries immediately. Pepper is in danger. After telling Jarvis, Tony staggered towards the basement. While holding his cell phone, he quickly dialed Pepper's number. I just don't know why, but no one has answered Xiao Zhao's cell phone. He rolled down the long stairs all the way. I finally reached my workbench, but I couldn't reach it even with all my strength, the first generation micro arc reactor that had been repackaged by Chili Pepper. Ah, Tony let out a hoarse roar. Without the arc reactor, could he even feel shrapnel blocking his blood vessels? There was no reason. Even breathing became difficult. I hope that guy Chin can rush to the company and rescue Pepper. He should be fine. Tony's consciousness began to blur, just when he was about to give up. A metal-armed intelligent robot that is often teased for its clumsiness. It seemed as if it sensed the plight of its owner. It actually slowly drove over from a distance. Then he waved his metal arm and swept the arc reactor off the table. The glass cover shattered instantly when it hit the ground. Tony suddenly used all his strength, picked up the arc reactor and stuffed it directly into his chest. Ho! Oh, good boy! He took a deep breath of air and didn't forget to compliment the metal arm. I finally recovered, and a feeling of surviving a disaster emerged spontaneously. Jarvis, have you contacted Chin? I'm sorry, sir, Mr. Chin didn't answer the phone. No time, Pepper. The importance of Pepper to Tony is self-evident. After Tony recovered, he quickly put on the armor and asked Jarvis to call Pepper's phone continuously. Fortunately, just as he was flying towards the company, Pepper answered the phone. Tony, 
Pepper had just finished her work when she noticed that her cell phone, which was set to silent and placed on the sofa, was full of missed calls from Tony Stark. Pepper, thank God, you finally called me back. If you are still in the company, leave now. Obadiah stole my reactor, and he also secretly made a battle armor. Oh, God, are you okay? Tony, I mean what are you going to do without the reactor? Like Tony, Pepper was immediately concerned about the other person's safety. I'm fine. Fortunately, you gave me Stark's heart. I'm fine. I'll rush to the company right now. You leave right away, right now. Oh well. When Pepper knew that Tony was safe and sound, she immediately got up and ran towards the elevator. It's a pity that little Pepper just ran to the door of the company. The asphalt cement blocks on the ground surged. A steel giant more than three meters high broke through the ground and emerged from the secret underground research base. OMG. Pepper took a few steps back and looked at Iron Overlord in surprise. Pepper. It's great that you are here, I will send you to join Tony now. Obadiah controlled the Iron Overlord to raise his iron right arm. If Chin Xiao were here now, he would definitely lament the magic of fate. Because even if his arrival changed a lot of things. Even the steel armor was born two months earlier than before. But some plots are still the same as what happened in the original movie. It's as if it has been set in advance. It's the same now. Just when Pepper was about to be beaten into a sieve by Gatling on Iron Overlord right arm. Tony fell from the sky in his suit. Whoosh. The dynamic acceleration directly hit Iron Overlord head, and broke through the wall with Iron Overlord. They rolled together onto the busy street outside. Two steel figures, one large and one small, directly penetrated the carriage of a large van on the road. They both rolled to the middle of the road. The sudden appearance of the behemoth blocked the lane. The approaching vehicles suddenly swerved and changed lanes due to the sudden change. I don't know how many surrounding vehicles collided with each other. Some vehicles behind didn't know what was happening in front of them, and they honked their horns frantically. Another car quickly changed lanes to avoid Iron Overlord and Iron Man crossing the road. But the car behind was not so lucky. It was traveling at high speed and the vehicle in front suddenly swerved. After turning, the driver saw a huge steel giant lying in front of him. In panic, he subconsciously stepped on the brakes. Kankin stopped in front of Iron Overlord just moments before he collided with him. There was no time to breathe a sigh of relief. Obadiah controlled the Iron Overlord to get up on the ground. Looking at the station wagon in front of me, I picked up the vehicle. Amidst the screams of the driver in the car, he directly raised the car as a weapon. Concentrate all your energy on your chest. Tony glanced at the people in the car and said quickly. The reactor on his chest suddenly lit up. A laser cannon thicker than the palm of his hand shot out fiercely. He directly knocked Iron Overlord into a roll several times. Then Tony stretched out his hands. Mark II steadily caught the vehicle that was about to land. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.